The F-4 Phantom FGR-2 flies for the Royal Air Force in War Thunder. Let's dive in. British military aviation went through a bit of an identity crisis back in the 1960s. They had a laundry list of cancelled projects, prototypes that never led to anything, the Hollywood-style drama behind the development of the Harrier jump jet, and years of political maneuverings to try and save the British aerospace industry from going under. The end result of all this was that they decided to buy a custom version of the McDonnell F-4 Phantom II to replace several aircraft out of their current inventory, and eventually, uh, use of the F-4 got expanded, and then contracted, and then augmented with extras. Seriously, the story of the UK's Phantoms could be a miniseries drama. In any case, the eventual product was two versions of the F-4, which included significant amounts of components from the UK, but assembly in the United States. The Royal Navy got the Phantom FG-1, also known as the F-4K, and the Royal Air Force got the FGR-2, also known as the F-4M, which is what we're looking at here. The original requirement for the FGR-2 included primarily a ground attack capability, with air interception added on as a requirement afterwards. It entered service with the RAF in 1968 and served all the way until the end of the Cold War in 1992. The weapon system of the FGR-2 is, at the time of making this review, one of the best available in War Thunder. The Phantom carries the ANAPG-59 radar system, which has an IFF, an ACM boresight mode, and a pulse Doppler mode to target low-flying targets. You also get a full ballistics computer with the CCIP for every weapon subtype. Its weapon loadouts are pretty diverse. You can take bombs, rocket pods, missiles, and a centerline gun pod in a whole bunch of different configurations. The gun pod is optional with the dedicated air-to-air -air missile loadouts, but comes required with all of the multi-role and air-to-ground presets. For missiles, you start off with the AIM-9D. I have to say, this is a better entry-tier missile than most other jets get, which makes sense considering that the FGR-2 is currently the end of its tech tree. You eventually upgrade to the AIM-9G. The performance of the D and G looks very similar on paper, but the AIM-9G has slightly better off-boresight capability, and it can slave to your radar system, which the D cannot. For semi-active radar missiles, the first unlock is the AIM-7E Sparrow. This is a fairly capable weapon with solid range, but as with all early semi-active radar weapons, the tracking can be a little flaky sometimes. One thing to keep in mind is that the AIM-7E takes over a full second and a half to start tracking, so if you're having trouble using this at short ranges, that's why. It's not you, it's the weapon. Your top-level weapon upgrade for the FGR-2 is the Sky Flash missile. This is an updated version of the Sparrow with significantly improved capabilities. It has better range, it pulls harder, acquires faster, and tracks better. As of making this review, the Sky Flash is one of the top two or three weapons in the game. If you can get good with semi-active radar missiles, Sky Flash will be a workhorse, and it deserves a little special attention. As you may be aware, the AIM-7 Sparrow was not a great weapon in the larger context and the UK recognized this pretty early on when it started deploying them. To that end, they wanted to perform some significant upgrades, and were generally successful in doing so. First, they upgraded the original conical scanning seeker head with an inverse monopulse design, providing significantly better performance at low altitudes and short ranges, as well as an upgraded rocket motor and an active radar proximity fuse. The results... Well, in terms of the Sky Flash missile, Britain delivered.
so back to the FGR2. The flight performance is typical Phantom stuff. Speed, rate of climb, and acceleration are all very solid. Maneuverability is average-ish for a top-tier jet. You can dogfight with it, but if you get sucked into a rate fight, it might not end well. One of the important details with this plane is that its performance is noticeably impacted by weapon loads, a lot more than other dedicated fighters at the top end. If you load up on bombs or the rocket pods, your already iffy roll rate is noticeably reduced, like you'll actually be able to tell the difference. And either of these options, as well as the gun pod by the way, will reduce your overall speed and maneuverability into the lower end of the average category. Now, don't get the wrong impression here. The FGR-2 is a good fighter. It just may take you some time to develop a playstyle and float flight profiles with it that works for you. The fuel load also matters, as always, but the engines on this thing are thirsty. So, it can be a bit of a gamble if you fly out with empty tanks and decide to risk it. Taking the FGR-2 out into live missions gives you a lot more flexibility than you might think, but with the caveats I just mentioned about finding a playstyle that works for you. What I mean is, you can do, like, high-altitude standoff attacks with a Skyflash missile with, like, a Vulture playstyle. You can use this as a tactical bomber if you really want to, or, like, while you're grinding the missile upgrades. You can even try and use it as a dogfighter with the Sidewinders, up to a point. Assuming that you plan to use the FGR-2 primarily for air combat, there are two real choices you need to decide. First, if you're going to fly your initial run at a high or a low altitude. Each will present some pros and cons in this plane, but you can credibly operate in either space, and I'd recommend, you know, trying a significant number of missions in both before really making a decision about what your preference is. Second, and very importantly, you have to decide if you want to take the gun pod. The gun pod adds 650 kilograms of weight to your plane, as well as a huge bucket of parasite drag. The gun pod gives you far better attack capability against ground targets, and gives more options in a dogfight, but carrying it will reduce your flight performance in basically every way except for your rate of roll. There are times flying the FGR-2 where, you know, the gun pod gets me some extra kills or lets me wipe up some soft targets on the ground for extra points after the enemy team is dead. You know, you get that brief little window as the meter goes down. But there absolutely have been a few dogfights where I wondered, you know, maybe I'd done better if I didn't have those, you know, a couple extra kilograms of gun pod weight hanging off my plane, and maybe I would have gotten those extra couple of turning degrees faster without it. Either way, it's a gamble, but it's an important decision to make, and like with the choice about altitude, I strongly suggest giving both options a try before really kind of settling into a groove. The landing profile with the FGR-2 is pretty basic. This is a heavy jet, so I do suggest practicing in test flights a bit to figure out your approach speeds, you know, where you can safely kill the throttle versus when you need to land at like 35 or 40 percent. The plane has a drag chute and good brakes, so no worries there, and it also has a tail hook that you'll never get to use. The visuals with the FGR-2 are, quite simply, wonderful. You get a few skins to choose from. I obviously prefer this nice blue one, but you also get a couple of nice light gray options with low visibility insignia that are easy to cover up if you prefer to fly out with some custom rondelles or something. The cockpit is also pretty decent. You get a radar B-scope in a good location, a useful heads-up display, great visibility, and the Phantom's distinct tinted forward glass. Overall, this is a good cockpit. To close up on the British Phantom FGR-2, this plane has a really good radar set, with a wide selection of good multi-role weapon loadouts. One of the best missiles in the entire game as of this review, and it's crazy fast. However, the FGR-2 doesn't have combat flaps, and you can get outturned by smaller fighters at this BR. The final verdict on the FGR-2 
is that this really is one of the best aircraft in the game right now, and absolutely can be a solid workhorse if you put some time into practicing with it. As always, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.